it's seven o'clock. Let's call this meeting to order. Uh, this is the uh, November 17th meeting of the Town Farm Planning Board. Um, we'll start with some administrative things and just kind of remind you that the exit is over here. Uh, and when you came in, um, we uh, Please turn all your cell phones, pagers, and smartwatches and all that off or mute them or whatever so we don't have interruption. We'll be holding this meeting in accordance with the rules and procedures adopted by the board January 20th of 2021, as well as the town board resolution 326 on uh, remote attendance. I'm not sure if Adrian is online. We will. <laughs> I'm doing things a little out of order today. <laughs> okay. I realized that after I started. Okay. I was gonna I was gonna recover. Okay. <laughs> You're screwing us up over here. So, so we will call the meeting to order and do the pledge of allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right. I guess that worked. I talked to Sam, who's actually taking care of things, and reminded me of this. I appreciate it. Um, um, did, is Adrian online any by any chance? Um, I don't see his name. Okay. But we have a phone that's dialed in also. So, okay. I just don't turn. So um, that is pretty much it. Next item of agenda, on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Everybody get a chance to review them. Have any changes? Sean does such a great job. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion by Tim. Second by Aaron. Aaron. Any other comments? All the favor saying by saying aye. 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 Okay, minutes are approved. Uh, order of business. We have a uh, continued site plan, uh, the preliminary site plan approval for lot four of Blues Road Industrial Park and uh, special use permit uh, for the same. Ron? Yeah, this is a continued public hearing. And uh, there should be. Resolution of like we have any dates. Uh, since I've received the request from the applicant for dates, mm -hmm. so just fill in the blanks and we'll go from there after the uh, uh, public public hearing. Okay. And all right, so we did receive a letter sent in from DDS. Uh, requesting that the meeting be continued to January 19th. Um, okay. I did follow up with the applicant on the phone call. They're not even sure if that's going to be long enough. Uh, they are very strapped um, time wise and financially with the project they got going on right into Victor with the dealership. Uh, but they are very adamant that this is the project they want to continue with with us. And that they want to move forward. They just have not had the time uh, to do its due diligence with this project each time. So they would like to keep on our docket. But at this point, we might still see some more continuations just until they can get all their ducks in a row. We just don't want to lose what they've already put into this project as well. Understand. Understand. Okay. Um. Okay. okay, this is public hearing. Do we have anybody in the public that would like to speak for or against these two applications? It is public hearing. Do I have anyone here in the room to speak for or against these applications? How about online? Do we have anybody online to speak for or against the uh, Women's Road Industrial Park? We do have people online. I don't see anything in chat. I do not see anybody coming off of mute to come to this one. Okay, uh, board have any comments? No. I mean, my comment is we appreciate the applicant not trying to push something through because they don't have time. Let's get them to find some time, do it right, and we'll give them what time they need. So, uh, we have the date of the continuation to January 19th in the uh, in the uh, John, if you'll fill that into the uh, resolution. 
And that's what we have, right? Is a continuation resolution. I have a motion to waive the reading of continuation uh, resolution and uh, move for its adoption to January 19th. Second move. by Tim. Move and second it. Any other comments? Clerk, take a roll call vote, please. Lucia? Aye. Doug Leeds? Aye. Aaron Sweeney? Aye. 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 Okay, that was both of them, right? That was continuation for both of them. You can say category. Yeah. Okay. All right. So next item up is the continued site plans uh, for James and Nancy Blanca. TB 1002-21. They are online. They are online. Okay. Go ahead and tell us what's going on. Hello, this is Mike Green on behalf of the Flangas. Um, we're just uh, proposing a single family residence with private wastewater disposal and a pri and uh, hooking up to municipal water on a six acre site. Okay, thank you. Ron? Okay, the resolution for your consideration to approve the condition. Right, and uh, we, we have the speaker that was taken care of. Yeah. We just wanted to verify a speaker has been taken care of. Was it? We have a speaker resolution as well as a, a preliminary site plan resolution with condition. Okay. Dan? Um, yeah, we've done a thorough review. There is a bunch of conditions on this uh, preliminary site plan. Um, also, we do have new speakers just mentioned, but nothing out of the ordinary on this one. Okay. I would. Okay. Engineer. No, our comments have been addressed to the permanent or I apologize. Our comments were issued to them prior to the last board meeting, which we're waiting for response on, I believe. Okay. Um, but I saw that I saw the draft resolution. I don't have any issues with the board moving forward. Okay. Fire? No. no. Okay. This is a public hearing. No, no. I didn't think so. Okay. So, um, Aaron. I have no comments. Okay. Uh, Is that on here? Tim? Yeah, I'm good with these. Okay. So, next up, we have a secret resolution, correct, John? So, do I have a motion to, let's see, explain, Ron, explain to us the secret. It's a. Type. What? It's an unlisted. It's an unlisted, okay. I just didn't print out that resolution. Why? No, that's okay. Uh, do I have a motion to wait the reading of the uh, secret resolution and approve? Aaron makes a motion. Aaron? Second? Doug. Doug. Any other comments? Clerk, take a roll call vote. Lucia? Aye. Doug Beach? Aye. Aaron Sweeney? Aye. Ed Hunt. Aye. So, secret's been complied with. We now have a preliminary site plan. Uh, resolution with conditions. Mike, you guys are okay with the conditions of approval? Yeah, there were no uh, no conditions that uh, we haven't probably already addressed. Nothing that was out of the ordinary. Okay. So do I have a motion or by the board to approve the resolution with conditions and wait for you? Motion by Tim. Tim? Second by Aaron. Second by Aaron. Any other comments? Clerk, take a roll call vote, please. Lucia? Aye. 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 Okay. Preliminary site plan approval has been done. So when you get the uh, updated plans in, we'll get them signed and then you can move for five. Okay. I just had one question uh, for clarification. When we make the application for final uh, site plan approval, uh, how many prints do you need? Is it 11 prints again? Yes. It's the same as what you did for preliminary. Same as preliminary. But we don't have to refill out a whole new application, correct? You would fill out the final application. So you filled out the preliminary, now you're going to fill out the final application. There is a and final the, application form to, to complete. And 11 copies of that too? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good to go? Okay. Okay. Next item up, subdivision. PP 1102-21 final two lot subdivision for Gerstner Medical.
How are we doing tonight? Good evening. Um, for the record, Alex Amory with Passage Engineering Offices at 217 Lake Ave, Rochester, New York. Um, I don't think a whole lot to talk about for the subdivision. The proposed subdivision remains the same from preliminary. We'll obviously be getting into the site plan after this. So. Okay, let's finish up the subdivision. Ron? I no questions on the resolution. And? Great resolution on this. Uh, pretty much everything was corrected at preliminary, so we're good to go. Okay. Go. Highway engineering. Yeah, we, all of our accounts have been in trust. We signed up on the preliminary subdivision plan already. And on the subdivision, I don't think Fire got anything. Um, board, anybody have anything on the final on the subdivision? This okay. isn't a public hearing, so I didn't think there was anything. So, um, there was a resolution, I assume, with some conditions. There's always conditions. I assume you didn't have any issues with the conditions of the resolution. I do not. Okay. So I have a motion to waive the reading and approve the resolution with conditions. So moved. Moved by Doug, second by Tim. Tim, and then. <laughs> yes. Anybody else have a comment? Uh, first, take a roll call, please. Resolution? Aye. 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 Subdivision done. Okay, let's get to the final site plan approved. Dan, let's start with you on this one so you can okay. to explain to us where we're at All right. and what we're doing. Here. So, so now you, you do have a resolution for final approval. Uh, I'm going to ask the board. Um, we were not able to complete the signatures for preliminary at this point. And the reason to that is the board. For preliminary approval, one of the conditions that you had was that you were to approve the elevation drawings before signatures of staff and the chairman to be added. So with that being said, uh, we have not been able to complete that. So you need the signatures on your preliminary before you can hear the final. So tonight, um, I'm asking the board to either lay this over or continue it um, to your next meeting. And review the elevations tonight. Yeah. And if you do approve the elevations, then the staff and chairman can sign the preliminary plan and you can hear the final site plan at your next meeting. Uh, I would just move them back one meeting to uh, get this going. Now, there is some other things that I think we should take this opportunity to talk about. Um, and I, I would like the applicant to talk about what you had going on so that we get it all addressed so that if you guys do approve elevations, you can be at your next meeting so we can get the final site plan. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you understood where we're at. We had a little snafu there. And uh, so, so go ahead and uh, let's talk about it in general, knowing that we'll put a shit off to the next meeting for final approval. But we do want to look at and approve the uh, elevation. So go ahead. Okay. So, regarding the site plan, uh, Similar to subdivision, we obviously received preliminary approvals. Mm -hmm. um, we had the opportunity to address the preliminary MRB comments uh, as part of our resubmission. Uh, there was also a number of comments we received at the last planning board meeting from uh, the board and the staff members. Uh, those were addressed and incorporated. Um, I think for the most part, the layout's gonna look primarily the same for the site plan. Um, we did receive a comment letter for final from MRB. You know, the comments are fairly technical uh, erosion control, stormwater, right. construction details, all that. Um, we're comfortable working through those. Um, as far as elevations, I, I, I think the ones kind of where it went wrong were submitted right before the last planning board meeting. So there wasn't. Um, did give the board a lot of right. opportunity right. for you know constructive comments at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so what you see in front of you is uh, essentially the same. Um, which were, they are significantly different from what was submitted with the preliminary. They were changed between the preliminary submission and when we appeared at the board. Right. Um, you'll see there's there's uh, a number of new features that are have incorporated uh, relief 
kind of focusing on the northwest corner of the building. That's the primary entry. It's also the kind of the corner of the building that's most prominent on the road. You know, the majority of the traffic would be coming, I would say, fairly safely from uh, County Route 41. Um, so you'll see that on the west facade, the north facade, um, there's a number of aluminum and glass, you know, storefront windows. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's some awnings incorporated. The roof feature also stands slightly higher than the, the remainder of the roof. Um, and then some of those features tend to carry around to the north facade and the west facade, the window systems. And then kind of transitioning towards what I would call the back of the building would be the east facade and the south facade. Um, there's a couple windows on the east facade and on the south facade. Um, it's where you'll see the warehouses kind of located in the back of the building. So there's really no need for uh, light penetration there. So um, it's primarily EFIS and ACM panels. Um, there's different aluminum coping systems. Um, one, one primary feedback item we did get from the board was a concern over the overhead door facing Hortensia. Mm -hmm. It has been reduced to a, a double man door. Yep. Um, again, with, with the landscaping requirements, I, I don't think you'll really see much of it at all anyways. Um, okay. Yeah, the building itself, you know, it's set down fairly lower than um, the residential project to the rear. Everything kind of slopes out to County Route 41, which is, I think, in general, a good planning practice, having the, the commercial properties lower than the residential versus vice versa. Um, obviously, a flat roof system, gutters, downspouts. You won't have things on top of the roof. You're not put. You're putting your HVAC on the side. Yeah, on the ground on the side. Ground on the side. It is a post on top. Okay. All right. Anything else before we turn over to staff? No, I don't think so. You know, it's a town road. The town owns yep. the sewer. The town owns the water. There's really not much from an outside agency standpoint. Okay. All right, Ron. Yeah, uh, I don't believe you've got preliminary approval yet. There's preliminary approval is conditioned upon paying a elevation. Correct. We haven't signed a preliminary approval. Got it. Correct. It hasn't been executed. So that would be the. We approved it, it just hasn't been executed. Right. It was conditioned on approval of right. allegiance. So you got to have that approval. So we have to do this before we can do that. So, yeah. So, I don't think you're in a position to move on final tonight. No. What we can do tonight is, from what I understand, is approve the, um, the elevations, which would then allow us to sign the preliminary and then allow them to come back at our next meeting, hopefully making a few minor changes to the titles on the documents and get it back into it. Fine. Well, really that's kind of, he seems to be stuck on the preliminary. He likes <laughs> that word. You know, whether it applies to final or not, he likes preliminary. <laughs> oh, and you, you, well, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Anything else, Ron? Dan? All right, so a um, couple things on elevation that, Came up at the uh, review of the preliminary. We had talked about the possibility of having a road on the third side or a hard service on that third side. Yeah. Uh, the fire marshal looked into this more. Um, the aerial, they could reach from the two sides, but they had to get to the roof. Um, so to have more impervious surface didn't make a lot of sense right. uh, in, this, in this situation. And it would be such a road closest to the building, you would be in the flat zone. And it would probably be beneficial to the fire department. So um, it was researched, but decided that that was not a good decision. Cool. Um, the other thing is, um, as long as we're talking about site plan with the new sprinkler regulations, right. 
We have to look at the water line coming in to make sure that it can handle the building capacity of certain the building. Uh, so we're asking the applicant to go back and just look at that because the service yeah. right now isn't probably size large enough to handle that, but you will have foot sprinklers in. You guys adapted that now? So yeah. yeah. Oh, we can check it. So yeah, that's probably going to be a four inch line. Right. Yeah. That's what we're anticipating. It would be an upgrade to a four inch line. I think it's a one inch line now coming in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we would definitely want to see it go four inch. Um, <laughs> So that's something that to take into consideration. And then um, I think that's all. I think Lance has some couple things to comment on, but that's all I've got. Okay, Don. Good. Lance. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, MRB Group did issue a letter. Um, we've been working with Constance on the drainage. Again, just to reiterate to the board, the project, as you recall, they're the existing site neighboring it. They were trying to achieve drainage improvements for both this site right. and that site because they weren't able to accommodate that drainage. They're not only meeting the DC requirements for their site, they're enhancing it and doing a little bit more to go above that level to try to oversize this facility to accommodate some of the misses that we weren't able to achieve on the other side. Okay. So it's going to take a minute, but we were going through and we have some technical comments, but it's typical that we still have some technical comments remaining. They will be addressed prior to MRB signing the plans. It's a requirement for them prior to get a DC permit. But I just, I know that there were some comments as it relates to the SWIP and discrepancies. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, those things will be addressed. Okay. Um, as it relates to the water main sizing, I do apologize. I mentioned to Alex before the meeting that that was an oversight in our end. We, we were aware, of them, obviously, with the other projects that we've seen, that the town had adopted that. Obviously, that, that the plan will need to be updated to identify. Um, otherwise, I don't have anything additional unless there's additional comments okay. from staff. Okay. All right. Or the board, excuse me. Anything else from uh, fire? I'll say I think we addressed everything. Okay, uh, Ron. Yeah, I do have one question. It looks like you added some additional lawn area to the south. What is that? Probably area was. Remember, we had a discussion in the last About week. About putting that up a little. In the uh, to the south, you have some lawn space. Oh, all of you have anything else? It looks like it was a uh, um, you're saying removing brush. I think you know, I think there's a little bio area on there. Yeah, there's some bio area. Yeah, yeah. That's part of the storm water, so that's going to be the answer to that question. Yeah, I apologize. I kind of skipped over what. Uh, that was from MRB's comments. What Lance was alluding to, I forgot at the time we met for a preliminary that hadn't really been formalized in drawings, but there are some bio swales that now take all the uh, downspouts from okay. the building itself. Um, just the whole checking and understand Ron's comment. So Ron, if, if what you're saying is there's a, a detail or Symbol in the plane that looks like something different. That's there's an area identified as a bioswale that wraps around the southern part of the building. I think it's the south yeah. west corner of the building. It also does that a little bit on the, the southeast mm -hmm. side of the building as well. Around, I don't know if that's what your comment is, but that's just for the record. It's one the toy okay. that are being added to the plane. So, if you last seen anything else, Ron? Sure. Okay. Um, so for the board, what we're doing tonight is looking at the elevation. Your goal is to approve the elevation and then be able to decide in the preliminary and then have them come back with file. But if there's anything we have to comment on file, we'll help them out with the fewer conditions on file. So we'll start with Tim. No, I don't have anything on that. The elevation. I know you've got at least one on the north area. <laughs> yeah, this is a pet peeve from a professor of mine back in school. So, um, yeah, I had to get that address. The only part there, I mean, you, you understand what he's talking about on the North Arrow? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what page was that on? Um, um, so, on top of the, the sign on. One of the pages is not the North Arrow, correct? One of the sheets has a, the wrong indication. 
I don't want to. I don't want to reference it directly. Yeah, I think it might have. These some of them have been corrected. Okay. Right. Anything else? The only other thing I want, since there wasn't anything that was called out of these uh, elevations, I just wanted to go on the record. It looks like white and gray for the building colors. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to have that there in case sound the road. We don't have that. The color version for some reason. Right. Yeah, that's, a black I'm gonna be and exactly. that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to, again, it was more of a that's like Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to call that and out. And what gray, white, and blue. Yeah, I mean I think it was, you know, yeah, it looks suitable. I mean it looks decent. So I mean dollar dollar windows, it looks nice. And I definitely like the color version. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
We haven't got to that point yet, I don't believe. Mr. Right. Chairman, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just, uh, just going to suggest that if you guys wanted to submit your letter of credit estimate, one would be required mm -hmm. for the project prior to moving into the construction element. Just just an item up because mm -hmm. the meetings in December. Yeah, so if you wanted to move forward with that with your next submission, do so. That would allow us to. Do we have that at all? Alex would generate it based on anything being dedicated to the town, stormwater infrastructure, landscaping. You could do bulk some. But doesn't the planning board have to agree to that? Ultimately, the planning board do the recommendation, town board accept it. Yeah. But to help. Well, and you guys actually do it. Staff signs off on it. We look at it. It's more administrative for us to bless it and move it forward. I just know that timing. I didn't know what yeah. the timing is. I'm just pointing that out. And I assume they'll be at the next PRC meeting. It's going to have to be yeah, first, first December, first Friday. Yes. It'll be really close to being finishing everything up and getting, once you get that letter of credit approved by the town board, boom, it's getting the uh, pre construction meeting. Yeah, they submitted now. It should be pretty straightforward for us to review. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. All right, we'll get that taken care of. We'll get that uh, next time around and knock that off. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, next item up. Do we want to do the secret training run? Uh, let's not do it. Let's wait till Adrian shows up. The next meeting, we'll do the secret training run. And we'll do it at the end of the meeting after we close the meeting, and we'll just knock it off at the end of the meeting. This makes it better, easier from a, from a general process game. So next item up is open discussion, Ron. Okay, the conference's plan is received by the uh, town board. Yep. And we will believe the schedule of the public hearing for next Tuesday night, first public hearing. Yep. And um, depending on what comes out of that, then we'll either make changes changes or no changes. We on to the next meeting of the environmental record and sending it on to the county. Um, we did today sign, I did sign the close out for the Auburn Trail. So Don has installed the crossing signals around 41. He oh, cautions wow. everybody to. That's the only thing Don's not talking about today. <laughs> Not to push the button and walk out there like some people. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is tomorrow night's the first uh, committee meeting on solar. Right. So uh, depending on how it goes tomorrow night, there may be a second meeting or there may be a third meeting. Or there may not be any other meetings other than tomorrow night. We'll see. That's about all I got. Okay, Dan. All right, so your next meeting, you have uh, a four lot subdivision on Rushmore. Uh, GNA will be back with uh, their credit union with those plans. Uh, Flagna will be back in with final subdivision. And now you just moved Gerstner Medical with their final site plan. Uh, just so you guys are aware of what's coming up here at your next meeting. Um, jumping back here, we met with town staff, Ron as well, went out and met with um, the folks with Farmington Commons um, in regards to the planning board's concerns with the driveway, the back of the plaza. Um, I had Sarah provide the packet of the email that was sent to us, um, which also included the pictures. And I'm going to actually share my screen here so that I can show it as part of uh, everything that's going on um, so that we can go over those. And um, you'll see in the first picture is um, the roadway facing Burger King standing at the plaza. There it is. Uh, the red line shows the shoulder. That's the area that they're going to, I believe, Don talked to them about putting melons in there to make it through the winter. Um, because there's a lot of area where the cars are going off the road. Your next picture is, um, again, looking from almost where the, uh, the bank will be. 
down toward Bergen, uh, putting millions in all the way along that edge. You can also see that they're adding a new stop sign. Uh, so instead of doing speed bumps, they're going to add some stop signs along that road um, at the intersection of where the plaza goes to the front. Um, that's going to be like a three-way or two-way stop there. And then they'll have stop signs on both ends to just try to uh, calm the traffic going down through there. I think they used to have one there right there at the end going into all these. Somebody knocked it over and it just never got put back up, I believe. That was the U, was it? Pardon? It wasn't me. No, I didn't knock it over. <laughs> so the, the next picture shows you that red is indicating where they're going to put in more millions. They're also going to, I believe, put it in what markers down to. Yeah, they got a contractor coming in to run blocks with about two foot along that edge, put millings in there, and then they're going to put delineator markers along the outside edge of the millings to keep the cars from expanding it further. Yeah. Good. And then uh, the next picture that you're seeing on the screen is the dumpster enclosures. Uh, right now, there's two different enclosures. There's one fairly long one that runs parallel with the building. And then there's one that you can see that's off to the side. What he's going to do and what he's proposing here is to remove the one that's off to the side and connect it to the existing. So it's all one large dumpster enclosure. And this also gives them some area for uh, snow removal storage. And, and then you can see at the end of that uh, dumpster enclosure, it says new stop sign. Um, that dumpster enclosure won't be there and that stop sign will be there. So. Um, and then he's doing some new gates along those dumpster enclosures to make them more presentable. Uh, this, this next picture is a current condition of the back of the plaza, um, where you can see all the windows and just stuff that needs to be cleaned up. And the proposal is in the next picture here. You can see that they're taking those windows out and they're going to block them all away. So it will be all solid block, and then he's going to paint it because it's all the same color. Um, so everything blends in. So all that storage that you can see through the windows now will all be locked and you won't see any of that storage along the back. And then the last picture is my code officer standing next to a dumpster that's on the far end of the uh, plaza. Um, the code officer is the guy on the left. <laughs> <laughs> so he is, uh, this dumpster, we have no idea why it's there or who put it there. So it's going to be real. So, uh, I believe. Serious. Yeah. So, with that being said, I believe that takes care of your uh, issues that you had. Um, right. Plaza. Did we have any indication of when they might be able to do the boring? They have done. They mm -hmm. have done that. We just haven't got the results. Yes. Okay. The borings are have been done actually when we were out there for the walk. We actually saw where the borings were, and they haven't left them back yet. So we're just waiting on the results. Now, if some of the results come back and they got to repair the road, that might change some of those plans. Correct. Right. Right. But a lot of these are just plans to get through the winter. Obviously, right. uh, their site plan shows curbing being put in. And so a lot of what they're doing is they're just be torn out, but they're trying right. to make it more user friendly and presentable until spring. Like that. Cool. All, right. All right, so my next project I wanted to give you an update on is Myers RV. Uh, the board is yeah. an update at this meeting. They have paved the driveway out front. Um, they have put in some of the sidewalk on Mertensia. They got it to their driveway entrance, which they're going to have to cut through their new pavement to put in the rest of the sidewalk, but that is uh, part of what they're doing mm -hmm. um, because of asphalt plants closing. They want to get pavement in and whatever you have there. Um, they did just get approval to put their transformer in from RGE. So we're hoping to see that very shortly and that will that energize the street lights. That's what we've been waiting on is there has been a transformer to plug the street lights into. Um, so site work is coming along and uh, I don't know if you can drive by there, but I think it does look good. And they have a flagpole that is I think one of the highest points of Farmington at the moment. Um, when I drove by and saw that, I thought, wow, that's very, but we all know that they have those very large flags. Right. And if you remember back from site plan, we had them put in uh, lighting for the flag and 
Right. I think it will look very sharp when it's all done, but it's definitely going to be an eye catcher when you drive by there because just the flagpole alone was impressive. So, uh, but uh, the building's coming along well. They're hoping to have that enclosed in the next few weeks. Uh, and then it will be all they're trying to get it bottomed up before the weather starts. So you can finish it up both over the winter. Yep. Um, I believe that's all I got. Hey, Don, now that Ron's stole yeah, the thunder. I was, was going to mention that slide, but we'll go away. <laughs> uh, we're working at some uh, stormwater concerns over Phil Landing, drainage around these ponds and stuff. Uh, and, uh, Did you find things. out anything out there? When you I could not find a valve, no. But I did get the outfall structure working correctly. The outfall structure uh, that crosses County Road 8, uh, at the end of the pipe was down into the mud a little bit. Um, I took a shovel over there and cleaned up around it, took the pipe up out, cleaned out the pipe, put the pipe back down into the water where it belongs. It was it was fun to watch down out there with a the little hand shovel. <laughs> yep, my waders. With his waders in the, in the water. Do you need help bring the pond levels down? Yeah, that pond, I would say, pond four right now is probably about two foot lower than it was. Uh, it is working. Pond four is working for design right now. Uh, we are in the process of working our way back up toward uh, the center pond and the east pond to get the infalls and out, out the falls cleared up so that they work correctly. I'm waiting on a little bit of drying uh, between the center ponds and pond four. There's some excessive cattail in the center of the ditch line. Uh, once I can get in there, I am going to clear the center of the ditch line, leaving the cattails along the two outside edges the way they're supposed to. And I believe that uh, the three ponds cross the front of well, County Road 41 will be operating correctly at that point. Whether it's going to fix their problems back there, I mm -hmm. highly doubt. We all know what that land is. And that said, we're going to do the best we can with making them stormwater facilities work correctly. Is there any, in hindsight, is the outflow of the ponds too high so that they're not getting down lower than they maybe they should? I guess that's really more of a Lance question. But I would say that that's what back more into engineering. And again, we, yeah. you know, we look back at that place. That place has been there for several years. And yeah. things have changed a lot. Possibly another two foot of hill and raise the house is about two feet. Um, that said, uh, in the pictures, one of the residents supplied to us, uh, there, that he showed his sump pump and his foundation <laughs> drain is at one level and his sump pump's about a foot below that. So he's trying to drain the whole. 10 acre corner. Oh. So, I mean, his foundation, his pump should be up at at the foundation drain level instead of a foot and a half or a foot below that foundation drain. <clears throat> I think very carefully, Dan is going to mention that to him at some point once we establish. We're going to take care of what we can first and then we're going to have some. But that, that said, we have a plan. We are working at it. Uh, we are sure that we will be talking to residents again at the next town board meeting. Uh, I've, I've got an array of pictures before, and I will have an array of pictures after where we've been at this point. So, so for the planning board, there were a number of residents who came in, complained about a number of issues, but mainly water, and self-signing was one of the probably one of the biggest concern areas, but certainly over in Dohaven, there were some more issues with water and sewer backing up into houses and stuff like that. So it was a couple hours worth of uh, spirited discussion between the residents of the town board um, that uh, that certainly put down to the brunt of it <laughs> and Dan did too. And uh, so, uh, they, I'm sure you guys have spent a lot of hours working on that. So, okay, now I, I just wanted to bring them up to speed. I wasn't sure they understood. Go ahead, Don. My pet crossing, I've seen six residents come up to the trail and push the button. One car stopped. Which okay. Out of the six people, and I've been I've been telling people the button is there, push the button, but look for cars because 
They're not shopping. They're not even that. They're not shopping. That's all. Is there any now st stopping for for crossing? That's what you call it. Is that state law? Or is that just uh what what when the flash what the flash of light uh bringing the crossing, yes, you get required to stop for is there a time for a grace period and then by at the end of that grace period, you're just you know, here's here's a cop sitting there. Really yeah, probably the let the sheriff's office know tomorrow. Okay. They were in yesterday. Let the sheriff address and educate people because that we can't stay out there and educate them. We are gonna I'll bring it to the sheriff's attention that uh, the bed crossing signs are up, the flashes are up. Uh, if nothing else, park down the road somewhere and educate people. Hmm. Right. Evil people. Anything else, Don? We, we've done all we can. Yeah, we've done as far as you know, trying to provide the safety. Now it's enforcement. Hmm. No, that's it. Thank you. Lance. No, just to piggyback a little bit on some of the strange stuff. I know that you know I haven't specifically uh, inspected Phillips Landing, but it's been there for a while. I know the the area between the farmlands and the, the wet water table that's already out there. Does it help? I know those ponds are trickle ponds where they they go for the older design, so they don't really not made for infiltration. They hold water and they disperse it to the other pond. So you have a higher water table, and then it's going to leak to more water, standing water staying in there. You have a a wet season like we've had, you're going to have some of that scenario occur. Um, I think the one thing that the town is trying to focus on is what can we do to clean and try to get some of that volume that might be otherwise gone. And we do that by cleaning out the inlets, removing some of the vegetation, including cattails from around the inlets and outfalls areas. As Don said, he cleaned up. The, there's a trickle tube inside a low. It's called the low floor orifice, and it's angled down so that. You know, as volume goes up, it trickles out. Don pulled that whole thing out, cleaned it up, put it back. And I think as, as time goes on, those things fill up the setting and debris. Uh, they all have to be cleaned out. I would argue that it's possible, even though I know Don has cleaned a number of ponds out throughout the town, it's even possible we might have to dredge at some point in time some of those ponds up just to get what sediment we can from the bottom, even though there probably isn't tons of sediment that's occurred over the last couple of years, but you just lose it due to growth and stuff. Oh. They're playing bottoms anyway. If I recall, when that pond four was done, there was concerns to the fact that that was dug overly deep. It probably it was. Substantially was. deeper than what it should have been. Uh, again, with the trickle tool, we were just going to try to flush it. Uh, that said, it was out the cattails, under the water. It was some fast. Oh, yeah. I got to read through the mortar. It was just quicker to pick the tube out of there, clean it. Back in. I think it's a good move. And, uh, so, I mean, I was it. I'm sorry. It flowed when I put it back on there. I mean, it, the, the eight inch pipe was, was gushing water and we poured uh, overnight. I would say it went down 15 inches. That whole vast area wow. went down 15 inches. And uh, then I went back the next day. Of course, when I put it back under, again, it's underwater. I didn't really have a, a visual under the water where it was. I went back the next day. And the next day, we re readjusted the elevation so that, as Lance said, that the inlet portion of it fell down a little bit so it works more like a siphon type uh, drainage so that it's not taking the actual junk right off the top, but the, it, the water from underneath right. siphons up the tube and out. So we're running clean water, less opportunity to plug. Good. I think you're okay. I don't have anything additional. These guys cover. Okay, cool. Fire, chief. But busy as usual. I mean, get we're, we're waiting. Don't here and busy. Uh, we're waiting with days of rest with the winter season. Oh so yeah. People's driving skills change. As you know, <laughs> so, and hopefully we won't get into the chimney fires, which surprised uh, we haven't yeah. had them already. Every year. So cool. And the structure fires are down, so that's good. Yeah. You know, but we're we're hanging in there. We're maintaining. Hopefully, uh, some will go in. Pete's newsletter, next newsletter, goes out and reminds people to clean their damn uh, chimneys. I would hope that people do it. I mean, I, I, I have a got to be reminded. And I do, and it's a short chimney. Some of these 20 footers, you know, I don't care how much clean out you got. If you don't do something to brush it down, 
And yeah. if you don't burn the right stuff, because most people don't burn good wood, they just pull the scraps yep. of whatever's handy. And that that that's a that's an ingredient for chimney fire with green wood. I mean, it just sticks to the chimney. You know, yep. The green soap goes up. And, but you know, last year we were we only had a few, and hopefully this year we'll even less because they're a pain. They're, cool. they're a pain to deal with. Other than that, we're we're hanging in. Okay, do we have anybody online? We do have a couple people online. Anyone online like to comment before I jump to the uh, to the town uh, plan board? Anyone online like to have any public comments? Okay, Aaron. Um, one question. Uh, so, friends and comments, going back to your picture of the existing building. Um, I've. I, I know there, there's a there's a but there's a there's gonna be a bunch of different lots on this. But when would when if if you didn't address the back of the building, the decor, when was a good time to bring that up? And what 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 subdivision part? So I I think the question, I'm gonna hopefully answer it here for you. Is I mean, anytime we have a project um, on a site, I think you have the opportunity. Yeah. This one, I think that the planning board addressed more on the subdivision um, as the site was farther down the road, uh, but they took the opportunity to bring the site up to uh, what we're looking for in today's regulations. Uh, but I do think you have the opportunity as subdivision or site plan. I mean, if this would have been part of the actual site, I think maybe you would have addressed it more on site plan. But yeah, um, since the site ended up being down on another part of the subdivision, I think it was appropriate to cover it in some way. But I would go one step further. The fact that we have now addressed it and it's gotten on the record, it gives the uh, building department more ability to go in two years from now when there's another dumpster thrown in the back or there's a bunch of trash on the back uh, under the awnings to go in there and say, hey guys, you gotta clean this up. Remember, we just went over this a couple of years ago type of thing. So the fact that we have addressed it and we hadn't addressed anything in that plaza, well, probably since Burger King at the, and probably before that. So it's been a long time since we've really addressed that. Well, so, um, yeah, so property maintenance code only allows me to do so much. Right. Um, but when I have, that's absolutely right. When I can go back in minutes and sign something that would be to talk about the discussion or put into a resolution, which is even better, mm -hmm. I, it gives me a lot more authority to go and say, hold these guys to what they agreed upon. Uh, because it's amazing after they get their approvals how much <laughs> their memory lacks of what they agreed upon. So, uh, and I think that that's something to remember when you guys are looking at landscaping. It's just not installing the landscaping. I think we need to start looking at maintaining the landscaping too. Because, yeah, we could have them plant 20 trees, but if they all die within a year, I mean, unless you say something about they have to be maintained. Um, for either the mm -hmm. you know, longevity of the business or something to that effect, because otherwise I don't have anything to go and enforce on. Okay. I think part of it also, Eric, when you when you folks are approving something with the conditions that you're looking at, dumpster and closures and stuff of that nature, without the specifics that you folks put in the conditions. Uh, this building was built a long time ago. Mm -hmm. This dumpster area became kind of in disrepair and a mess. So that that's one of the reasons that you folks look at that and talk about dumpster, dumpster enclosures for one on, on every new project and put that in your conditions to ensure that the last day and set next year, the year after, if he looks back there and that's a mess, well, it's right here and, and writing that the uh, the planning board put this as a condition in there that this is supposed to what that's supposed to look like. Okay. 
a lot of a lot of those a lot of those dumpsters and closures predated some of the newer code. Yeah. You know, so back then there wasn't a lot of what we have now, all the enclosures and gated entrances. Back then, some of them could just be standalone systems. A lot of the codes over the last 10 years have developed newer standards that have these enclosures. And so I think once the my argument to some of what I'm hearing is that once they're in the plan, I would give I would believe the code the ability to go back and say, well, you know, that un, unfenced dumpster says here it's supposed to be fenced in. Therefore, you got to fix it and maintain it. Well, I think my comment didn't have that before. And that clause was predated many of the current MTOD standards. Yeah. Uh, certainly, because it's been there forever. I'll give you a, a great example is uh, the dumping donuts, because under construction of the plate, they redid it there inside. Um, and then it came up that they wanted to remove their current dumpster enclosure and just have their dumpsters out there. And their, their site plan actually dates back to when it was a pizza hut uh, because they just redid the building. But their site plan, they kept the dumpster enclosure for pizza hut and the layout of the building. So we actually could go all the way back and say, well, no, this is what the site plan calls for. So they couldn't remove their dumpster enclosure. Now they're just making repairs to it. Um, the refreshment. So. Mm. Or we gave them the option to obviously come back to the planning board, which I don't foresee the planning board saying, oh yeah, just get rid of the exposure. So, uh, but you never know. I've seen some shared with them. So. Cool. so since he put this put this out here, even though you know we've been talking about lot two, which is the main. Yep. He opened himself up to for us to say, hey, fix your existing lot. Yep. yep. Because of the subdivision. Of the whole thing, yeah, okay. Well, it's now, also, also because of the changes in the road, yeah, right? yeah. Well, and the other thing is, is it would have just been an additional building on the lot if the bank didn't want to buy it, but it would still would have been the same. But if they want to sell it, then that's the only reason why there was a subdivision piece. But otherwise, it had just been the whole lot anyway, so we still would have site points, okay. All right, okay. all right, thank you. Yep, Doug. Tim, anybody else from staff? I don't have anything. I think it's going pretty well. I mean, we're going to, um, at the December meeting, I'll come up with a date to do our um, annual uh, meeting, probably mid-January type of thing. We'll look, we typically do an annual uh, meeting. I'm usually, we used to do it on Saturday morning about 10 o'clock. Get together, have a supervisor here, just talk about what we're doing, re look at the rules and procedures. Probably wouldn't be a bad thing, John, for you to send out those rules and procedures again. Uh, everybody should have them, but if you don't, look through the rules and procedures, see what we need to change or should change in there, um, because that's what we use. Those rules and procedures, I would guess, were very important in the overall process of what we did in the um with the uh, litigation of that uh, lawsuit because we have specific rules and we follow them so anything we need to add i don't like them to be too verbose they're already long enough but if we need something else in there we'll add it so yeah. other than yeah go ahead MTOD guidelines, yeah. mtod go guidelines we review small. every year also yeah, so it takes some time john will send those out too We'll we look at those both of those things and we'll review them that uh, Saturday when we come in. Other than that, I don't have anything else. As long as you keep Doug as your backup, because he really enjoys that. <laughs> <laughs> Doug's had a lot more experience at it than most uh, <laughs> people have been. Okay, most of the by Aaron, seconded by uh, Doug. Any other comments? All in favor, speak by saying aye. 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 All right, thank you, everybody. Um, I have a signature.